What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back out again with another New York Giants update video. Welcome in, guys. Draft season has been underway for a couple of months now, but it's really picking up now because really the first wave of free agency has ended, not just for the NFL in general, but also specifically for the Giants. I feel like, you know, they're going to calm down here. I really don't expect them to make any other moves, even not just splash moves, but depth moves as well. I think the, uh, I think that us bringing in Danny Shelton might be the last move for a while. As you guys know, that's how free agency works. You know, opens up mid-March, runs into a little bit of early April, but then at that point, teams are really gearing for the draft. They're really shifting all their focus there, and the next wave of players that they're bringing in are gonna be from the draft. And then you don't really see that second wave of free agency, which is usually depth guys or maybe one star player that didn't get signed in the first wave until May-ish. And then the third wave, which is like basically the entire summer. But I really think that we're done with the first wave. The Giants, of course, did a pretty good job they made a huge splash but that's not what this video is about i will be making a vid kind of recapping slash giving my entire thoughts on the giants free agency later this week what we're here to talk about is joe judge dave gettleman uh chris pettit and the entire giants scouting staff and front office what they're doing and how they're doing and who they're looking at currently so over the past week and a half maybe two weeks or so the Giants have really been focusing on looking at edge players and linebackers. So we all know because of free agency, it kind of set up the Giants in such a way that at pick 11, they could go in any direction. They could go with wide receiver again to continue to build that wide receiving core. Just because we added one good player to our wide receiving core, guys, doesn't mean it's fixed. Uh, but that doesn't mean we need to take one at 11 either way. I'm a believer in taking one in the third round now. They could go offensive line to try and finish up that line once and for all, get that right side fixed. They can go edge, which is one of the positions they're currently scouting, and finally get us a legit outside linebacker that could get some pressure on the quarterback. They could go linebacker as in middle linebacker. Maybe they say we don't want to, uh, you know, take a chance of the rotation of Ragland and Tay Crowder. We're going to get an actual middle linebacker to play next to Blake Martinez. That, there's really a lot of routes that they could go. And so far, the Giants have been focusing on the last two edge and linebacker because that's really the only positions they didn't heavily address in free agency. Now, I think they addressed it linebacker to a point where I'm comfortable with it with Ragland and Crowder. But edge for sure has just kind of been left the same. So just yesterday, they were at... Miami's Pro Day looking at the guys in Jalen Phillips and Greg Rousseau and of course Quincy Roche who I've been on for like months I've been telling you all about this guy now everybody's hopping on him that's how it usually ha happens but Jalen Phillips in particular had a stellar Pro Day and impressed everybody that was there and that wasn't there anybody that's observing the draft and observing Jalen Phillips he jumped up boards the story on Phillips if you've been watching my stream or if you've been following draft coverage by anybody really it's been the same. He's a great pass rusher with great talent that has proven at the college level that he could get to the quarterback effectively. And he has, still has room to grow, still has room to improve. It's just that his injuries have held him back. That's why he was always, in my opinion, gonna be a second round player. But until he had that pro day, where he blew everybody away 40 times shuttle time, you know, even in coverage, they had him dropping back in coverage and he was doing okay. He's definitely going to the first round. No, I don't see him dropping the 42 anymore. He's 100% going to be a first round player. There's going to be a team that takes a chance on him and say, we're going to roll the dice on the injuries. Greg Rousseau, on the other hand, he didn't have the greatest of pro days. And you guys already know how, how I feel about him. He, in my opinion, is very raw. He's a player that's going to need to be taken by a team that could afford to take a little bit of an experiment on him. If he goes in the first round, it should be the late first. Otherwise, I think he's a second round guy. We'll see how he goes. They were the Giants. Now, the people that were there were specifically uh, Joe Judge. All right, Joe Judge was there. But the Giants, they were represented at Georgia's Pro Day to look at one of my favorite, if not my favorite, edge rusher in this uh, class, which is Aziz Ojolari. That's where Chris Pettit was and also Jerome Henderson, which is our defensive backs coach which means maybe we're still looking to take a cornerback in the later rounds i don't know eric stokes Ty tyson campbell we shall see 
but Aziz Ojolari is somebody I've been kind of campaigning for and somebody I'd be 100% okay with. No, I'd be ecstatic if at pick 11 we take Aziz. Some people would see it as a little bit of a reach. And in my opinion, at this point, no player we take there is going to be a reach if they were supposed to go in the first round. So even if we take somebody that's projected to go like 28 at 11, it's not a reach. It's because of how our free agency went. We've literally filled in so many holes that it would make sense if we take, say, Aziz Ojolari, who's projected to go in like pick 20, which is nine picks after us at pick 11 because guess what he's the best player available at the edge position to take that would make sense or maybe somehow some way he's the best player available there it's not gonna be a reach for me for any of these players as long as they're in the first round that we take because of how free agency has dictated the draft we've literally addressed every single hole possible in free agency except for edge like i said at some point we did address linebacker but edge was the only one taking aziz wouldn't be a reach and he is the best or, or the safest edge in my opinion to take and that's not even an insult to him it's just that i don't really see too many red flags about him nothing on the field um you know with injuries or anything like that nothing off the field he's gonna be a perfect fit with the giants as well you guys know how i feel about him coming here getting with jeremy pruitt who was his coach for one year and then the combination of that and kevin sure and then of course reuniting with zoe carter who was he also played with for about one year i think i that would be amazing to me so that was it for the edges in terms of specifically linebackers the giants were looking at and were in present for their pro days judge of course was at penn state's pro day last um what was it last thursday and now the one person everybody thought he was looking at and it's definitely true he was looking at this guy is micah parsons and there you also got to remember though there is an edge there in jason Owe that maybe the giants take a shot at in the second round if he's there and of course there's the tight end pat fryer who if he drops to the second round and drops to the giants pick i'm taking pat fryer all right that dude's an absolute monster but we're here to talk about parsons specifically right parsons is the best defensive talent in the draft class there's no way about it the only thing currently holding me back and even then i'm just like it's not even holding me back is his off the field allegations because if joe judge takes him that means judge trusts him and that means judge said you know what he's a good character guy and that the allegations are false and whatever judge does i'm gonna trust basically right but that's why i'm like it all depends on what he thinks i can't know what he's gonna think so i'm just going off a previous experience where it's like when deandre baker had his allegations we let the man go but maybe it's something different this time because we do got sean spence on here i think we got grant haley on here saquon on here maybe they could vouch for him not sure how much they might play with him but michael parsons is the best defense of talent in this draft he would be an absolute weapon for any team that he goes to it's just that i don't know where he would fit in with the giants once again though if we take him it means they got a plan in mind it means they have some way that they want to plug him in whether it's at edge whether it's at that second middle linebacker spot or somewhere else i don't know where somewhere else would be but pat graham is a mastermind he's going to figure something out and the giants were also at uh, tulsa's pro day where is the home of Zayvon Collins, one of the best just like middle linebackers in this class, one of the best inside backers in this class. And Zayvon Collins is a guy that's projected to go like in the 20s as well. So like I was saying with Aziz Ojolari, if we take him at 11, a lot of people are going to see it as a reach. I'm not. I, I'm really not because at this point, nothing's going to be a reach if you're projected to go in the first round for me. And Collins, my God, if you have Zayvon Collins and Blake Martinez in the middle, guys, you we have automatically in my opinion one of the best middle linebacker cores in the league we already have one of the best secondaries in the league and one of the best defensive lines that puts us 100 percent as a top three defense right there i'm gonna go ahead and say it if we draft zavin collins at 11 which i will be completely fine with because you're not gonna get him in the second round my god guys you're talking about one of the best middle linebackers in the class pairing him next to blake that's a shutdown defense who's who's rolling up on us nobody's rolling up on us in my opinion in my humble opinion i could be wrong but jesus just thinking about it is already making me picture like number one defense in the nfl type of things i i know i'm reaching here but it is what it is but guys those are like the most notable players that the giants whether it's judge or an executive you know scouting executive that's the guys they've been looking at real closely over the past week week and a half gonna quickly go back over it the guys at miami just yesterday with phillips and rousseau before that aziz ojalari and the guys at georgia before that penn state with Mark, michael parsons jason Owe, and uh pat fryermute 
And then this is, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the Tulsa Pro Day hasn't happened yet. It will be later this week where they're going to be going to look at Zayvon Collins. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.